Hello, everyone. Great to see you guys again, and welcome back to the Piano Star Masterclass provided to you by Piano League. I'm your host, Brian Lin. During the live stream, you can ask us any questions in the chat, and we will do our best to answer them. You can also sign up to be a performer for these classes and get a chance to perform for our live audience. Today's guest teacher, Dr. Ross Savosa, is an internationally distinguished piano, uh, pianist pedagogue and is one of the most sought after piano teachers in the Pacific Northwest. An artist faculty at the Chopin Academy of Music, his students are prize winners in national and international competitions and frequently perform as soloists with orchestras. For more details, you can visit his website at salvosapiano.com. Welcome to the show, Ross. Thank you so much for having me, Brian, <laughs> and I am so honored to be here. And I'm excited to share my knowledge to everyone. And I'm very excited for you to share your knowledge. So um, as usual, we jump into our topic really quickly as we yeah. only have 30 minutes. So today's topic will be the secrets to effortless playing. So um, my first question to you is, why this topic? Why, um, why do we need to talk about effortless playing? Well, uh you know, like uh, Chopin himself, you, uh, there's accounts, if you read um, uh, Jacques Eigeldinger's book, uh, Chopin as seen by his pupils, he always said, facilement, facilement, like easily, easily, it has to be easily, uh, it has to be uh, executed without effort, effortless. And Franz Liszt himself said that the secret to piano virtuosity is through the touch. So it always starts with that effortless touch. And why effortless playing is that through effortlessness, you're more open to other creativity, like more better flow of emotions and more creativity comes from effortless playing. But when you're struggling playing something, it hinders you from uh, much deeper expressions. And so that's why for me, this is a very important topic to share. Understood. Um... I, I I guess we do see a lot of kids um, playing kind of not effortlessly. They 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 are playing, um, you know, uh, probably with some wrong techniques. So uh, why don't you share with us, you know, um, how um, I guess the meat of today's topic? How do you how does one start to 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 develop a more effortless playing? Well, you know, a lot of teachers ask their students, oh, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to get this sound. And I want, I want this kind of sound. Do this, do that. And they fail to, a lot of it is they, uh, we fail sometimes as teachers to um, teach the students the mechanics of how to get those things. You know, there's a lot of things we need to understand. Energy is the key factor here. And a lot of times kids don't understand how energy works or how energy flows. So for, for my students, at least, I make sure that I, I share with them uh, the understanding of the physics behind it. For example, the number one topic uh, on this topic that I'm discussing is flow. Energy always flows. It's like a water hose, like a garden hose, right? Once you turn on that faucet, the water will flow, right? And if you step on... Uh, on the water hose, it will get clogged there. And any stopped energy will constitute to tension. And so that energy needs to flow freely if we want an effortless playing. And, and how energy is transmitted to the body. For example, our body, just like anything in the universe, actually, it's, it's all in circular fashion. Our heads can turn. Yeah, we are we're ball sockets, you know, in our joints, uh, our, our elbows move in, in that fashion. So energy in, re, in, in reality flows in circles. Well, technically circles, but not only that, it flows on waves, just like waves of the ocean, just like any other waves. And if you think about how planets move across the galaxy too, they move in spiral. But if you look at what I'm constituting, that's a wave. So right. There is that, that wave motion and how you can get those wave motions on the piano. For example, just playing simple one note, you know, and to get a beautiful tone that rings, 
you need to understand where that energy is coming from. And, and for example, if I lift my elbow, there's already an energy there. There's already an energy. But if I start from right on the key without any movement, you know, uh, there, there's a feeling of stuck there. Right? So generating, knowing how the energy flows, and the piano is right in front of us. Right? So energy itself is directional. So how do we get the energy across the key? That's the question. Right? And how do we generate energy so that it activates the key? And how we touch the piano, how much energy, how fast the energy we put affects the sound. Yeah, if you want to work, a much more sharper sound, you, you have to attack it in a certain way. But like what I said earlier, any energy you put in the piano has to come in and has to go out freely. So am I correct in uh, saying that you are talking about the flow coming from your body to the piano? It's, it's that thing that you have to figure out. Yes. And so there are channels that I tell my students. For example, think of an energy coming straight from the top of your head all the way down, right? And it flows through your body like a water fountain from above, right? And that energy needs to flow somewhere. So if your feet are dangling, right, your energy will be unstable. You need your foot firmly planted on the ground. And if it's a, a very tiny student, a five-year-old, then we need a footstool. Mm -hmm. We need to ground that energy so that energy can be steady. Once it's more steady, we can manipulate it. We can feel it. Sitting properly is very important. That's a good point. How how does one how does how does one sit properly? So I I have some few guidelines that I tell my students. Mm -hmm. Right, um, we want to make sure that the elbow is not too low, right, and most probably like around the height of the the white keys. That gives us a kind of a more streamlined uh, flow of energy. You see. We don't want it like this. Why? Because if you look at how the energy flows there, it goes, whoop, it stops here, right? And, and just like um, water flowing, right? It has to go up. And going up requires a lot more energy. Right? There's a trapped energy chair. So we want kind of a flow of energy there. You see that? It's like water right. is flowing. Right. So down. I guess thinking about the gravity... Um, yes. How, how to work with the gravity. Yes, to work with the gravity and how the energy will flow towards the key. Mm -hmm. so that's that's key. Now, if you're sitting too close like this, see that? Now, look at the energy, how it's getting stuck. Mm -hmm. Right? So we want somewhat like this. Mm -hmm. See? That's why some teachers teach kind of like, okay, put your knuckles here. That kind of, that is a, a good measurement on how far you can go. Now, if you're too far, then your energy, see the energy of your, this, it, so think of the spinal, your spinal cord as the main hose, right? That's the main source of your energy. That's the center. And then from that main hose, it distributes the energy into your limbs. Right? So if your body is like this, ugh, right? Then your energy is trying to balance. Imagine going, uh, standing right on the cliff, tilted, right? You'll be very nervous and you'll be very, and then all, like a lot of your muscles will try to compensate. So it's finding that the way to sit wherein you're not too forward or not too back either. But Certain instability is required for certain things. For example, if you want a bigger sound, well, you can use the momentum of the body going forward to get that sound more effortlessly without banging, which is a lot of kids, they want big sound and they, they bang it because they don't know where to get the sound naturally. Yes, and now I noticed that you are sitting on a uh, somewhat unconventional chair. Is that the chair that you play the piano with usually, or is it no, just be for it's, today? It's for teaching, and, <laughs> and, and I, I elevated it with a cushion. 
Ah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. what what's your what's your take on how how much uh, a, a a a how much of your 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 I guess your bottom should be on the bench? Because I, I think a lot of people. If you're sitting on the bench, you mm-hmm. want to make sure that you're not your your buttocks are not completely <laughs> sitting on it. You want to be slightly on the edge. Why do we do that? Is because it provides us with proper leverage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if you're sitting, and, and also you want to feel the edge of this tool, um, right on your pelvic bone, like uh, the bottom of it, right. And that will give you some sort of leverage. It's all about leverage. If you're sitting too far back, like for example, I'll try even on this chair. I'm sitting on the edge. See, if I sit too far back like that, then you see the energy is already resting. Right. right. Then I cannot use that energy. See, it, it it goes back too far back, right? Mm-hmm. But if I sit on the edge of this, there. I'm firmly footed. There's that energy ready to be used. So you, this will give you a much more natural sound. Right, and not only that. If you, for example, want to do a crescendo, right? Or, or, let's say you're navigating across the key and you want to spread your wings. Now, by spreading your wings, which means that your body has to tilt forward. And when you're playing in the middle of the key, you can go to the center if you're playing here. So it's very important to feel that, that your buttocks leaning on something because sometimes you have to move your weight on this side. Sometimes you have to move your weight on this side, and it's all about balance. When you're playing, see, when you're playing pieces like that, right? see, as you can see, some my body goes forward and back naturally. Is because I have to navigate mm-hmm. across the key. You can do it without doing that, but then it, when you get here, it gets a little bit harder. To deliver the energy, right? There's no momentum. There's no direction to the energy. So, like, so you want your energy to be more efficient. And that's that's really what what makes it uh, more efficient. And the next part of uh, of this topic is. Um, has to do with momentum. Okay, so you find your flow. So you find your flow. First part, yeah. you find your flow. You know, you know exactly how um, how to position yourself, right? Yeah. And and yes. and, and uh, find a comfortable flow. And then the next step is momentum. momentum. Okay, momentum. How do you unpack that. Momentum. Basically, the the premise of it is that you cannot start from static. Imagine a car, start uh, or trying to push a car that's not moving, right? Or uh, a car, for example, on a stoplight would waste a lot more gas to move forward than when it is already running. So kind of you, like the sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you, you were saying. I, I I was just gonna say kind of like uh, in physics uh, we what we call the static energy versus the kinetic exactly. where, where, you, where you're moving. Yeah, the kinetic. You know, when you have momentum, you can use it as vehicle. For example, when I'm doing, what I did before I even played a note is I did this. I had a slight lift. I had a slight lift because that is a momentum. That slight lift will enable me to have. So that is important, even with slow pieces. See, you need that momentum to get that note. Now, how do we renew those momentum? Because we can maybe feel the momentum in the beginning, but then I'm like. My, then my students ask, then how do you generate it again and again and again, right? <laughs> and that's where 
the wave motion that I was talking about earlier. We need to feel the energy enter and exit and enter and exit. And that's where also when you have downbeats and upbeats matter. For example, let's unpack, uh, let's slow down the etude Opus 10 number one by Chopin. See, we have this, right? You have mm -hmm. that. So within that, you will have a wave motion wave motion going there and then it restarts and so when you lift up your arm that's an opportunity to fall again right mm -hmm. so we have a drop with gravity here and a lift to lift the arm so that you can let it go again and drop see so you're using the lift to go back down and where to find those lift is the question. Right, because right? not, not every piece is structured in, in the way that the uh, Chopin etude number one, yes, right? Yes. Sometimes yes. the patterns are a little irregular. Irregular, and, <laughs> right. and that's where, you know, fingering matters, for example, right? Uh, fingering matters and um, knowing where the downbeats and upbeats are. For example, simple pieces. Ooh. Right? If you have down the upbeat, down upbeat, see that? So there, there's downbeats and upbeats, and even a simple Bach piece. So you have the main downbeat where you can drop the energy and then slowly let the energy lift again so that you can let it fall back again. So there's that drop and lift and drop and lift and the drop is should be very effortless like Chopin said let your hand just fall onto the key naturally because gravity can take care of that now the lift is necessary to choreograph because without that lift you cannot drop again so when you talk about lifting um which part of your hand or your arm or your, your body do you think is doing the lifting is it the wrist is it the arm? Which which part is doing the most work when when? I always tell my students uh, that when you get more advanced, all of those motions can get smaller because you're more efficient. But especially when I'm te teaching young kids, I try to engage, let them feel the entire arm. Okay. How the energy is moving. You see, the arm can move in waves. See that? When I lift my elbow, I can drag my hands up. Right now. If I do this, you see, it moves in waves, right? So when I'm dropping my, my head, right, that wave needs to keep on going. See, that wave is your vehicle. Timing that wave and timing the notes along that wave is how you can get effortless playing. Great. Now, if you mistime it, for example, if you do... If you mistime it, then you will struggle. And that's why you have to feel your touch. Does it feel easy Does it, it, it or doesn't feel easy or it feels difficult? If it doesn't feel easy, it means that you're not using the correct motion or you're landing the notes in the wrong spot of that wave. Right. I guess the difficult thing about uh, about any kind of rotational work is, is how to control it, right? Because um, a lot of times, I guess, when, when, when students... I don't know if you uh, if you if, if if you've encountered this when students try to do it sometimes maybe they go too quickly or they move too quickly um, that that, that they, their notes aren't really not every note is catching the weight. You know what I mean, right? Let's see. Um, let's give, uh, give an example uh, like that, right? Or that's a longer note, right? So longer notes tend to, will require longer movements. So bigger movements in that case, right? And, and with that, you have to also, uh, I tell my students, a longer note requires a slower and bigger motion. Mm -hmm. Then smaller notes, for example, those you can group together. But longer notes, well, so you have...
So all of those can be grouped in movements, right? It's just a matter of how you can control how big, and, and that's why when I said macro movements and micro movements, you can have a macro movements taking all of those notes in one circle going up. But within that, there's actually a rotation too from this note to transfer the weight there. So it's just a matter of how you transfer the weight. And, and, and this is the third part of, of my lecture. It's directional. Any weight you put, even when we're walking, we need to find a balance point. Now, that balance point is very important because, like what you said, some students will over-rotate or under-rotate. Now, if you over-rotate, the common uh, uh, syndrome of that is you're, you get, lose your balance. Right? If you over-rotate, sometimes your rhythm suffers because it's too big. Right? So I use certain balance points. And usually the closest balance point to the keyboard is your big knuckle. So whenever you, my students are using momentum, I tell them, stand that wave, that energy on your knuckle. Let it stand on the knuckle. Feel how that knuckle will transfer to the next note. See, and that note, feel how the weight, the wave will transfer it to there and then to there. In a way, by teaching this effortless flow of music, you teach them how to feel their emotions between the notes, how to feel the sensation between the notes. Then suddenly you have musical students that's uh, being very more, ex more expressive. They're not just playing the notes, they're feeling what's in between the notes. And what is musicality anyways? Musicality is is, is the ability to feel the music. And what better way, what best way to feel that music is through motion? Like dancers. We are dancers, actors, and musicians at the same time. We act the character of the music, but we dance it too. That's why choreography is very important. Feeling what's in between those notes is what constitutes musicality and artistry. It's very, uh, of course, you and I, um, understand but I, I'm sure uh, people who, who are watching you move in between notes will ask why does it matter because you've already played the note you the sound has already been made it's not a string instrument where you can change the sound after you make them so um, how would you answer that question how why does it matter that you move after you play a note it's like what I said energy needs to flow in and out Right? So it go so, ba goes back to the energy flow. Yeah, it has to flow in and out. And once you stop that flow, that will constitute tension. And also it will affect the sound. What you intend to do after affects the sound. For example, right? For example, if I play like this with the intention of going up there, see the sound changes. But if I intend to lift, for example, in between there and then to drop there, the sound changes. The intention that you put playing the note will change the way you strike the note and it will affect your touch. So it matters not, not only to think, how are we going to attack it, how are we going to approach it, but it also matters how we're going to exit. And also that exit movement from one note to the other will determine the entrance movement of the next note, right? And then so it goes into this never-ending cycle. So that's why when you hear a pianist play one note and then your attention is captured from that first note all the way to the very end, it's because that pianist has, can feel the energy flow from, what, from every note from the beginning to the end, to the, the very rest, the ending rest of the music, right? right? And, and so that's that's what constitutes a lot more musicality, really, when we're playing piano. And even with dancers, you'll find dancers that can do the steps, but then there's those dancers that can fill those steps in between. The in-between of the steps is really what matters. And my teacher, uh, when I was younger, uh, Reynaldo Reyes said, it's the magic between the notes. Magic happens between the notes. 
very so good point. Before the attack and after the attack, that's where you have to really listen and feel it for. Very good point. We have a very general question coming yeah. from uh, one of our audience um, that I, I will probably uh, follow up on that question as well. He said, um, I'll show it on the screen. Uh, he said, what are your tips for Chopin Edu Etude Opus 10 number two? Obviously a very, very broad question, but I, I also have a question uh, that mm -hmm. maybe you can tie those two together is, is, is do you, does, does the effort is playing, the, does the flow and the momentum work the same or differently when you play slow and when you play fast? Do you tell your students to do different things you know, how, how do you get, get your students, for example, on the Chopin Etude, right? How the do you get stu your students? The to concept do it? is the same, whether it's fast or slow. Okay. Yeah, the concept is really the same. The, the whole, the, the, the physics of it doesn't change. It's just that when you play faster, the movements get smaller. Right? right. And so th when my students play practice with veteran, for example, when they're practicing slow, we exaggerate the movement so they can feel the movement. And then when they start playing, little bit, a little faster, those movements shrink. And so, for example, when I'm like, you know, like, you can see bigger movements, but in reality, when I play it slow and I'm practicing it slow, this is how I envision it. Go up so that I can drop again there and then go up again and then drop again and then go up, drop, up, drop, up, drop, up, drop. So there's those drop, up, drop, up, drop, ups underneath, right? And if you look at my hand, my fingers are already touching the key. So I'm just rolling the weight up. So I drop here and I roll up and then I prepare again to just drop and then roll up, drop, roll up, drop, roll up, drop. And when it gets faster, those drop roll up shots becomes what, becomes what I call micro vibration. They're just there, but you don't see it anymore, but you feel it, but it's very, very tiny. So that one. And that's how you're gonna be able to play fast and effortless. If you can feel those. Again, direction of the energy. That's where hands, because they're like hoses. You, each one of those are hoses of energy. Your energy will flow out of it. You can't really, if the music is going this way, you can't have your wrist that way, right? Because the energy will go that way. So you need to move your hand so that the fingers, the energy flows towards where the note is going. Does that make sense? It's directional if you do it the other way, which a lot of people playing this, they, they try to go like that, and then, oh, the, that third finger cannot, it takes so much energy to flip it. It's like driving a car, a car that's turning to the right, right, on a, on a curve, and then suddenly turn to the left, everybody inside it goes, Grr! Yeah, we'll be, we'll, 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 it's like a car crash, right? So energy is the same. It has to be directional and you have to be efficient. So my my whole thing about that, uh, advice for that is to feel your down beats and let the hand fall on those down beats and then roll up. And don't hold the middle voices because Chopin said, those are 16 notes. So if you hold them, you're going to get stuck, right? So you will have to let them go. That's my two cents on Chopin A2. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Smiley Angel, I hope uh, that answers your question. Um, he, he had another question about, um, since, since our next student is, is um, coming in, uh, mm -hmm. not here yet, so I think we have some more, uh, more, more time. He said, um, what about how to increase endurance. So I guess when 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 you are I I, I don't know if if that your your previous answer probably answers some of that questions as well, right? How how do you keep your uh, uh, endurance up? Well, the word itself endurance. Yeah. There's something negative about that. <laughs> because endurance means you're enduring something painful or you're enduring something that you shouldn't be enduring. Right. So my my answer to that is that if you choreograph it properly, you don't, you don't have to endure anything. 
really you be able to practice for hours until your brain gets tired. But your body, I, I don't, it's not usually my body that gets tired or my wrist or my arm. It's my brain that gets tired. I start to forget things. I'm like, oh, what chord am I? You know, it's, it, my, my focus wanes off. But because I choreograph things carefully, I study every little movement so that I don't have to endure anything. And again, it goes back to effortless playing. Choreograph it well, then you don't have to endure it. Anything. And I think with with uh, your you know the, the the way that that you know Dr. Dr. Ross is describing, um, if it, it it really frees up your fingers a bit, no, it like it, 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 your your fingers don't feel as tired when when you play play it that way. Yes, and and, and I don't really you know like people teach finger articulation and stuff. Yes, it's important to have independence of fingers. Yes, it is. But on the grander scheme of things, how do you use the entire mechanism in such a way that you don't have to waste so much energy. Like when I'm playing that, that thing, see, if you do it, if you let your fingers move like that, for example, like that, you see, you're wasting a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And also the mobility of the fingers when it's so curved like that and attacking like that, it, it gets slower and your muscles get tighter. So I just rest it on top of the key and I let the wave itself play the notes for me. Right? So the wave going there, see the wave already played it for me. And then I just renew the wave. I just renew it over and over. You know, the same thing for everything else. If you look at my left hand, see there's a wave there. See that again? Since we're on the topic of Chopin I2, we have a, 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 why don't you just do a quick, I know uh, our next uh, performer is actually here, but why don't you just do a quick demonstration of the black key etude as well, since uh, I think oh. another. Uh, uh, so this is right. lateral rotation. So again, there you go. Now, I have two big waves there. I have the one wave is there. The, that's one big arm wave, you see? But my arm went one again. Da 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 da. You see that? But then inside that, I have microwaves. Da 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 da. See how there's two different layers of of waves that go parallel with each other. So I have this da 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 da. But also, if you look at my arm, that's how you'll be able to play it effortlessly and fast. You go. You have a bigger motion to take care of so many notes, and then you have micro movements that take care of, in, of individual notes. Awesome, awesome! Thank you so much for that uh, for uh, for that demonstration. I hope uh, uh, Caleb that uh, oh answer, answers your question. Um, okay, so quickly we uh, that that went by really quickly, and we it's now time for the masterclass portion of, of today's talk. Um, so our next performer is here. Uh, his his um, name is Henry, and um, uh, he's from Illinois, I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Henry, okay? <laughs> All right, so yeah, so I'll, hear it. I'll leave it up to you guys, and then, and then I'll be here uh, whenever you need me. Whenever you're ready, Henry. Thank you. 
Henry, uh, you play with pizzazz, you play with a very good dance rhythm, and you play with a great feel. And I can feel your energy flowing through the piece. And that's where I'm going to help you, right? Let's try, for example, can you play just your left hand alone from the beginning? Good. Now, as you can see, sometimes it's easy to miss the bottom note, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, your motion is this, down, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is not as accurate. Now, if we do down, circle, going to the body, right, on the bottom note, and then on the chord, lift up your arm and then go back down again, down, up, down, up, down. Up. Let's try that. Yes. Good. 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 Now, Henry, Henry, that's also a possibility. You can go up and then down, up, down, up, down, and that's clockwise motion, right? That's a possibility. Now, I want you to try it the other way, counterclockwise. So on the pinky, instead of pushing up, think of dropping down and then slide to the chord, and then go up on the chord and then go back down. So your arm will just fall to your body, swing it to your body when you play the pinky, the bass note, and then when you play the chord, lift up your elbow to take it back down. So it goes around and around. Let's try. Yeah, on, on the pinky, instead of going up, think going down. Slide down, like you tunnel down underneath. Good. Good. Right, so that, that's another option. Now, see, it seems more natural for you to go up, right? Up, down. So let's try that previous motion when you go up, and then when you go to the chord, just slide back down and then up. Try that. Good. Now let's do it a bit faster. Now with the right hand, both hands now. I can see your arms flowing better. Now let's try a tempo. Okay, let's stop there for a second. Now, whenever you have those faster notes, those faster notes, as you can, uh, what, from what I'm seeing from, from how you were playing it, your fingers are the one guiding, isn't it? 
right? Now, I want you to do something different. I want your arm to guide your fingers. So if it's going to the right, let your arm guide it to the right. Just, can, can we try just the right hand from the da 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 dee da 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 Yes, your upper arm. Yes, let your upper arm, the, the forearm and the elbows and the upper arm, guide the fingers so that they can get to the, where they need to go before they need to be there. Okay. Yeah, because if you don't do that, then you will be dragging your arm along. Okay. Then your arm is heavy, you see? It's like dragging someone that's, not, that's sleeping. Like you're dragging someone. It's going to be very heavy. So you need your arm to help you get to where it needs to go earlier. Let's try that. So from the beginning? From, uh, from da 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 Now, Henry, try to predict where your notes need to go. And you want your arm to be there before the fingers. did you notice about the energy that you're putting on the tips of your fingers? What happened to the energy? So like um, that all that energy was like going into the keys? Yeah, suddenly it starts to sound more brighter, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, but because before you were using just the fingers. And so were you, you were using only the energy coming from here. But if you use that, then the energy that you put into the keyboard will be much more clear. Let's try both hands now. In any part there, did you feel that you were stuck? Oh, yeah. yeah, some parts it felt stuck, right? Now, those are the parts where the energy is not moving, right? So common place where the energy gets trapped is in our elbow, our wrist. So we want to make sure that that's flowing, okay. right? Let's try from the very beginning, and I want you to feel the energy flowing throughout the music. That's right. Now, Henry, 
whenever you have to play the far away keys, you want your body to move forward. Why? Because then it will help you reach those notes better. If you're playing here and then your body is still far away from it, from the piano, it will be hard to reach it. You will slow down to get there. But if you go, use your body to open up your arm. If we put your body closer to the piano, we can reach farther onto the key. See? Now, the farther we are in the piano, the farther we can, the, the, the less we can reach through the keys. Right? So I want you to feel that whenever you have those stretches. Let's try from, from in the middle when you have those, those stretches. That's right. That's right. did that feel? Oh, better. Yeah. Much better, isn't it? And also more accurate. You're more le you're less likely to miss those notes because your body is already there. Yeah. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Now let's try one more time. And even open up more so that your left hand will doesn't miss either. So another trick is before you reach that note, so try to move your body before you reach the note. Yeah. So di da 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 pum, not di da 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 pum. Okay. Because if you only move when you're on that note, you will, it's going to be too late. The energy will be late. So you want di da da da, so that before you get done, you're already there. Try that. Okay, use the uh, Henry. Henry, use the pi da 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 da. See, not da 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 pa. You want di da da da. That's right. That's perfect. That's right. Let's try that again. Got it. Now you can, can you hear that those notes now have a new kind of ringing sound to it, isn't it? Suddenly there's a ping. They're like stars, right? So let's recap. Let's try from the very beginning. What do you have to remember? Free movements, right? Open your arms. Make sure that the energy is flowing. And if you need to, uh, uh, arms always have to guide yes. your fingers, right? Guide the fingers across the key. And then your body, your torso, will help you navigate across the key as well. So let's try from the beginning. Thank you. 
Bravo! Bravo! How did that feel? How does it feel different? Uh, because like, um, before uh, this lesson, I wasn't able to reach it, and then I was like hoping I would um, like make that sound, but now I can like easily reach that sound, and um, for like, you know, my elbow guides my fingers, like that really helped actually also. Wonderful! And also what I heard this time was that it felt more confident, isn't it? Yes. It felt more expressive all of a sudden. So we see when the energy is flowing properly throughout the body, then we can relax more. Yes. We're less nervous and also we can express more. Mm -hmm. Now that the energy is flowing, I want you to make this polka more funny and humorous. A little bit, just little dark humor. So now that you, you're feeling free, have fun with it more. Da 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 ba da da ba 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 ba. See, instead of da 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 ba da da ba ba ba. Now that you can free, be free. Da 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 ba da da ba ba di da. That last note, you can take care of it a little bit more. So let's try. Have fun with it. dancey your left hand always have bass note chord bass note chord bass note chord bass note chord right mm -hmm. now if they both chord uh, now this is for further further uh, now that your energy is flowing better think to something to to reconsider you don't want boom 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 those two notes to sound the same now let's try how about this heavier not not too heavy but kind of somewhat heavy and then lighter heavy Lighter, heavy, lighter, heavy. Let's try just the left hand. So as you notice, the chord side is a little bit heavy, isn't it? Good. Now let's try to make the pinky the heavy one and the chord the lighter one. Bom, bom. good now that's starting to sound a lot more dancey don't you do you feel it right now i know it's quite an adjustment so i'm not going to kind of force you to do it but just for demonstration try it slowly and feel the left hand go heavy then light heavy like together now with the right hand
Very good, very good, very good. So right now, because I, like I said, it's hard to, it's going to be hard to incorporate the loud, the heavy light, heavy light that quickly. But you actually did most of it perfectly like that, right? And also now, how are we going to choreograph it with this thing choreography that we have, dee da 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 da, right? Dee da 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 da, so that we don't miss those things. Now, the way I do this, especially when you have that left hand down. Down, is to practice it by itself and cover your eyes <laughs> or close your eyes. Close your eyes. You have to be able to play that left hand blind. Oh, right? Oh, you just close, just close your eyes, you know? Just close your eyes. You don't have to cover it. Just close it. Stop, Henry. So see, that will also give you an extra layer of, of security later. If you can play that without looking at it and just feel it. Heavy, right? Heavy, right? Heavy, like, And know how much movement you need to get to one note to the other by feel, not by looking at it. Then that will enable you to free up your brain, your part of your brain, to do other things. Right? So you're not worried about that left hand. Then what will happen when that left hand becomes very, very independent, your right hand starts to become more expressive. Oftentimes, our right hand gets dragged down by the left hand. Yes. Yes, isn't it, right? Your right hand wants to do something beautiful, but then the left hand kind of like, no, stay here, stay here. <laughs> So you want that left hand to be very, very, very independent. One way is to really feel, feel how far the notes are. Practice it blind, right, with your eyes closed, so that then later your right hand can be more, more free. Bravo, bravo, bravo. I, um, Brian, uh, I, I am very impressed. And also, uh, uh, please tell your teacher uh, congratulations. Uh, he or she has, has been doing a wonderful job with you. Your movements are free. You, you're, you're very teachable. And you're very, very, very expressive. Thank you so much for, for playing. Wonderful Thank job. You, wonderful. Bravo. Thank you. That was great. And we... Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Brian, I great. just need yes. to uh, you have a short bathroom break. Go ahead. I'll yes. be right back. Go ahead. Yes. All right. All right, I'm back. Thank All right, you. we're good? We're good. good. Great. All right, so our next performer is ready in the backstage. Let's bring him in. Perfect. And he's going to be playing the music for children uh, by Prokofiev, number four, five, and nine. Yes. And uh, his name is Max. Hi, Max. How are you? Hi, Max. Good. 
Great. All right. So whenever, I'll, whenever you're ready. Uh, us to stop in the middle or you want to play all of them first and then we'll discuss what do you want to do uh, play it through uh, okay. yeah let's play it through and then we'll come back to them okay let's do number five Number nine. 
bravo. I made some notes uh, on my sheets. Let's start with, uh, again, with number four, right? This was, you play this very beautifully. I love your steady rhythm. I love your slurs and your accents. I love the direction of your dynamics. Now, how do you count it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Now, there's another way to count it is to feel. So to count it in four. For example, you can count one beat per measure. One, two, three, four, right? Let's try that. In your head, count. Yes, like pa 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 Good, good. Now the same thing. Pa 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 pa. Right. Always think in bigger beats. Now, so let's try from the beginning, and in your head, feel the bigger beats. Good. Good. Isn't it always by four? Did you notice? Yeah. Yeah, it's like pa 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 and then you have pa 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 It's always by four, and then you have one, two, then three, four, right? Then one, one. Two, right one, two, three, four. Isn't it? It's always it's always by four. So if you can feel those groups of four, this will have a much more, I would say, playful uh, dance feeling to it. Instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, pa, pa, pa. See, the more beats, bigger beats we feel, the more heavy the music suddenly kind of feels. And it's like a dan the dancer isn't stomping too much. But it will flow much better. Right? Let's try again from the beginning and think in one beat per measure. Ready? Did that feel? Uh, good. Yeah, yeah. The, what's what's the difference that you felt? Uh, I felt uh, playful more. Yeah, but does it feel a slightly bit more lighter? Yeah. Yeah, it feels a lot more lighter because if we're doing this too much, see, the, if we have too many downbeats, what happens is the music becomes a bit fat and heavy, right? Then it can't really dance. Um, as quickly because it's too heavy, right? And it goes up and down too much, it gets tired. Now, do, you, do you ever feel tired with your arms when you play this? Uh, Not really? Uh, yeah, once. Once, right? So we, you feel, if you feel your arms going down and down, up, 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 da, 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 pa, 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 pum, pum, you will not get tired. You count one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now, right. So feel now that your destination. Yup. So of course, strong on the one, right? But feel that your four. One, four, one, that the four 
slides to one like this. One, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. So one, two, three, 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 two, Does that feel different? Uh, feels like much more light, lighter, and then like feel like I can play it a lot faster. Ah, it fe it seems faster, isn't it? It seems, but uh, you actually did not play it faster. It just feels like it's more active because whenever we're guiding the fourth beat going to the one, we have more energy. We have one, two, three, four, one. And then we have natural energy to for our first beat. But if we go one. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Right, it's a bit stuck, you see? So we go one, two, three, four, one. So what that, which we just did, it, it flows a lot better. Now let's try from the double bar, from the D major section. Now, this section, this is how I want you to count it. Count it one beat per measure, but in eight. So you go one, 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 two, three, three, four, four five, six, seven, eight. Right? Think eight big beats. Get it? Let's yeah. try. Good. How did that feel? Uh, much easier. What you should now. This is what we're going to do. One, two, 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 two three, two, the four. We are going to think of a climbing a mountain, climbing a hill, like that, right? So we're going to feel the music grow, go towards the middle. So one, two, 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 three, two, the four, five, and then from five, six, seven, eight, you climb down. Five, two, six, seven, eight. Feel that? Let's try that. Good. Now, this is what will help. On the beginning, start softer. And then as you go to beat number four, one, then the two, the, the three, two, the four, move your body forward. You see the music, it goes up, isn't it? Right? Now, we, we can reach the notes better if we move our body forward. Towards when you go up. Right? Try. Now, how does that feel? Uh, like, I can reach, like, much easier. Yeah, much more easier, right? Because if we don't, a lot of times we get there and it doesn't feel right, isn't it? It's like, oh, it feels a bit lacking energy but if you use your body forward then you'll have much better energy let's continue now now think four beat well one beat per measure okay ready go Rage.
Now, to get more sound towards the end on that forte, on that chord, does it feel too far away for you, this one? Uh, does it feel far away? Uh, the last one feels pretty Now, how can we reach that? Uh, bend in. Yeah, you want to move forward. So you can go, let's just try the last two chords. So you can reach it better. Uh, octave lower on the left hand. Left hand, octave lower. Much more lower. It's a G and A. G and A. G A. Right? That's right. Now, don't be afraid to go forward. Because if you lean more forward, you're going to get more sound. Lean more forward. That's right. Now, so that you don't feel trapped, when you lean forward, open your arms and then go back. That's right. Now, how does that feel? Not good. Yeah. How is it different from before? Uh, it's much easier to reach. Mm -hmm. and now, more sound. Ah, with more sound. There you go. You can play it with a good forte. So let's try from the, you can see there, there's a po poco meno mosso part. Yeah. Let's try from there. And as you get to the chord, start going forward. As you get there, start going forward to that. You're already forward. You're already right there on the key, right? Ready to play those chord when you get there. Try from the poco meno mosso. And between this, you can lift your arm a little bit and then swing, swing it again. So you want, and then so you can have two flappings of the of the wings, I call it, right? So you, it's like if you want to get higher and higher and higher. If you were a bird, right, you have to flap your wings, right? So on those two chords, flap them, palm, palm. Try from the poco meno mosso. And don't be afraid on that last one. Flap it big. Because that's, you see, the last chord has an accent, isn't it? Right? So there, if you have an accent, you have to flap it bigger. It's like you want to fly. You're an eagle and you want to go higher. You have to flap that wing bigger and stronger. Yeah, let's try That's much better, right? You feel a difference? Yeah. Yeah, you have more free. Now let's try the number, the regret. Whenever you're ready, let's try it. Good. Now we're going to improve here your pedaling, right? So I would like you to change pedal when you uh, uh, every measure. Change your pedal on the B flat so that it's clean. You don't want the sound. You do want this to mix with that, right? You don't want that sound. So you Change. Let's try that. That's right. Good.
good. Now remember, remember the counting that I we talked about. Let's count it like this. One, two. Let's count those one and two and then one and two. Each time, try to go to two. So you go like this. One, two. And then again, one, two. Try to go to two, yeah? Try that. Now, this is what we're going to do now. So now you can feel those two, right? Now we're going to count it in four. We're going to go dun, 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 two, right? And then go three, four. So your destination now are number two and number four. Let's try that. So go towards two and go towards four. <laughs> Good, good, good. Now that note here, is it hard to reach? Yeah. Kind of hard to reach. So this is what I want you to do. So you, you're, you're bum, right? You're sitting there. You can tilt your body weight to the right, right? And then this part of the bum kind of goes up, right? And then if you tilt your body to the right, this other part goes up, isn't it? Try that. Swing from back and forth. From left to right. Feel it? Yeah. Yeah, you feel it. Now, when you're here, whenever you're on this measure, on measure seven, right? Seven, which is, yeah, on measure seven, start tilting your body towards the left already, right? So, so that it can, your body will already be there. See, your body will already be there before the finger needs to be there. Try it. Try it. Maybe start from uh, measure five. How was that? Uh, more easier. More easier to reach right now. Try to roll your body to the left even earlier so you can get there more comfortably. Try again, measure five. I would try to roll, start rolling your body to the left on measure six. So you already roll start rolling there starting on measure six yeah from five you're in measure five you're in the center then measure six you're already leaning towards the left and then to the left right let's try that ah you see you got there easier isn't it right so every time you need to cross you want to make sure your body shifts the weight towards the left, right? For this one. Got it? Then let's continue. Let's continue to measure seven, eight, nine, measure nine. Thank you. 
So same thing here on measure, starting from measure 29, 30, you know, that, that part when you're here. Start rolling your body to the side, to the left. So that you're already there before you need to, right? Anticipate that crossover, okay? You got it? Let's move to the next, uh, to number nine. So on this one, I want you to focus on counting it on bigger beats like that and having destination. For example, one going to two, then three going to four, right? Those ones. And also, when you have the shifts, make sure to move your body, right? Tilt your body to the left. Got it? Let's try number nine before we run out of time. Uh, let's first. Uh, uh, let's try plain tag, number nine. Oh. Yeah, number nine, yes. Good. Now I have a question for you here. Which one do you hear more, your left hand or your right hand? I hear uh, both of them. Both of them. Which one do you he hear louder? I think the left hand. The left hand, right? You hear louder. Is that what you want? Do you do you want the left hand to be the 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 heavier one? Uh, no. Ah, why not? Because uh, the right hand is a melody. The right hand has the melody. So this is what I want you to do. I want your right hand to feel like they're hopping, like light little bunny hops, but and very light, very light, so that you can we can hear more the right hand better. Let's try. And also to make that left hand, uh, uh, another way to make the left hand not too loud is to play it already touching the key. Already touch the key before you play it. It will be softer and you, you will be able to control it. Let's try now. Yeah, I have a question for you, uh, Henry. When you hear the word crescendo, what do you think it means? It means uh, gradually getting louder. Ah, that's a good, uh, good meaning of it. Now, I'm going to give you another meaning, the literal meaning of it in Italian. Crescendo means to grow. Ah, right, to grow. Right now, if we have a, if we need to do a crescendo, should we start the crescendo already grown up? I uh, know. Or let's start it, baby. Yeah, little baby, and then let it grow, let it grow, let the sound grow, and then decrescendo means to shrink. Right. So if you change the meaning in your head of crescendo, oh, whenever there's crescendo, the sound has to grow. So, for example, in the beginning there. It starts soft, right? Little, tiny man, and then it grows. You see it? Let's try. Let the sound grow. So try it a little bit softer, yes, or smaller, and make it grow. Let's try from the beginning of number nine. Start it much more smaller, and then make it grow. Very good, Henry. Very good, very good. Now, when you're thinking of uh, growing, is is it just the right hand that's growing or the left hand too? Uh, the left hand too. Yeah, the left hand too. So, and also think this balance. You know, the bottom of the key here is naturally loud. Now, the upper part of the keyboard is naturally softer. So, when we're thinking of piano, the word piano, right, the soft, we want to make sure that the right hand is at least three times louder than the left hand. So which means that the left hand has to be even more softer. Three times at least softer. Can you try that? Feel your left hand three times softer than your right hand. And then whenever you do the crescendo, the left hand is still three times softer than the right hand. 
Ya, yeah, let's try from thinking. Henry, what helps me do a crescendo? See, if I'm sitting here and I put my hand here, right? I'm not putting uh, much weight in here, right? But if I move forward, you see my the weight of my arm gets heavier. Feel that? Now, if you press a, a note and if you move forward, you would feel that the, the weight will get heavier. So when you're doing a crescendo, what should you do? Uh, lean more in. Lean more in. Let's try just the last page, you know. When you have the crescendo, lean more in towards the crescendo. On this one, my suggestion, because we're out of time, is to, whenever you have a crescendo, start much soft. Start much soft so that, so that the sound can grow. If you start already a bit too big, then the sound can only grow as, like, grow a tiny bit. Then we, we have a very tiny crescendo. So if you want a bigger crescendo, how do we start? Oh, very, very soft. Much more smaller. Okay. Bravo, I hope you learned a lot. And bravo, bravo, uh, with a wonderful, very musical performance. And you're very, very, very easy to teach. Give my congratulations to your teacher. You're, you're, you're in very good hands. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Wonderful Thank you. job. I got a bit confused with the name, the Max and Henry. <laughs> right, right, right. It was the, the, the Henry was the first kid. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you again uh, for spending the time my, and sharing your wisdom with us tonight. My pleasure, my pleasure. They're all they're both very teachable and uh, have wonderful teachers, and and it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. They got the movements pretty quickly. I know, right? I've always been so impressed by these kids. Uh, all that doing these master classes. You know, I'm just amazed. Yeah, yeah, and and sometimes it's just that little change in uh, thinking. You know, my teacher always said, if you can think about it correctly, you'll be able to execute it correctly. So it all starts with just if think it differently. Right, you can be able to change it. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, um, all good things. Uh, you know, good times pass really fast, and we come to an end to tonight's um uh, episode and thank you guys so much for watching um if you want to see more we have you know this master class happens every tuesday if you want to sign up you know there's a class next tuesday deadline is tonight so feel free to sign up um with that said hope everyone has a wonderful evening happy practicing and uh we'll see you 